from the moment of entering this world to the silver years with challenges of a different kind to situations of trauma when the entire family needs support. Over 300 specialist doctors across 50 specialities cater to patients from the region, other parts of India and overseas. When genuine care meets state-of-the-art technology, one certainly feels better and then heals better. Kaveri Hospital, a trusted name in healthcare. With five key centers across Tamil Nadu, Kaveri Hospitals offers clinical excellence and world-class infrastructure in a myriad of disciplines. There's a 24 into 7 imaging services and a futuristic cath lab. Good morning all. Good morning all. We have today an interesting session on the bone health of women ahead of International Women's Day celebration. We have none other than Dr. Arvindan Selvarajan, Dr. Usha Sriram, and Dr. S. Chokkalingam. Dr. Aravindan Selvarajan is the co-founder and executive director and chief orthopedic surgeon of Kaveri Hospitals. He completed his MBBS from Stanley Medical College and then pursued his master's in orthopedics from Gujarat University, from where he won the DA Patel gold medal for achieving the highest rank. He spent the next 15 years in Ireland and the United Kingdoms from 1996 to 2010 practicing orthopedic surgery in the world's best hospitals like King's College Hospital and Guy's and St. Thomas Hospital, London. <clears throat> Dr. Aravindan returned to India with the aim of setting up a world-class hospital in Chennai and thus the Kaveri Hospitals at Chennai was born. What gave him, what gives him great satisfaction is that the clinical results they produce at Chennai Kaveri are better than most of the hospitals that he has worked in London, he says. He also presented the results of the comparative study at a meeting of the British business delegation organized by the British Council General at Chennai. Today, Kaveri Hospital has more than 1,500 beds with presence in multiple cities in South India. He has been awarded the best doctor by the Tamil Nadu Dr. MGR Medical University and Pride of Tamil Nadu 2018 as an emerging achiever in healthcare. Welcome, Dr. Aravindan. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Usha Srira graduated from the Madras Medical College and is a diplomat of the American Board of Internal Medicine and the American Board of Endocrinology, Diabetes and Metabolism. She is the founder of DIVAS, a non governmental organization for the health of girls and women. She is currently the head of the Department of Diabetes, Endocrinology, and Women's Health at the Voluntary Health Services in Taramani. She is the president of the Indian Society of Bone and Mineral Research. Her special interests include women's health, women and non-communicable diseases, gestational diabetes, and teaching ethical practice of medicine. Welcome, Dr. Usha. Dr. S. Chokalingam completed his MBBS from the Tanjavur Medical College and did his diploma in orthopedics from the Kilpok Medical College. A fellow of the Royal College of Surgeons, he is at present a consultant at, of trauma and orthopedic surgeon in the Tirichi branch of Kaveri Hospital. He was a consultant trauma and orthopedic surgeon for seven years at Epsom and St. Helier's University Hospitals in South London. He's also worked 
in Southwest London Elective Orthopedic Center, a leading joint replacement center in the United Kingdom. He has presented many papers and published a peer-reviewed journal and published in peer-reviewed journals and developed patient information leaflets and booklets. Welcome, Dr. Chakalingam. It's going to be an interesting session and I see a lot of people have already joined here. May I ask uh, Dr. Selvarajan to please, Dr. Aravindan to please start? Or would... Uh, Thank you. Uh, I think, uh, I mean, uh, well, Dr. Usha Sriram probably can start with the presentation, uh, followed by Dr. Chakalingam and uh, me, please. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Um, thank you, Sujata, for that um, kind introduction. And um, thank you, Dr. Aravindan, for inviting me to this uh, really important program. Uh, and I wish um, all the women who are uh, listening um, a very happy uh, Women's Day. I'm starting sharing my... Uh, slides. And just to say that um, I will start with this saying that men and women are equal, um, but not the same. And this nowhere is it more true um, than when it comes to certain aspects of health, particularly bone health. And as I show you, um, this will become very obvious. So this year's theme for International Women's Day is choose to challenge. So what I want to challenge today is challenge the neglect, neglect of women's health, challenge the lack of awareness. And I think programs like this really contribute to raising um, awareness level and challenge the stereotype that only certain type of people get certain type of problems. Um, and very important um, uh, piece of information, while longevity, we live so much longer now, women especially are living well into their 80s and 90s, the age at menopause has remained stable, around 49, 50. And in Indian women, it's somewhere between 47 to 53. So now what is happening is women are spending nearly half of their life, one third to half of their life after the menopause. And therefore the changes that come with the menopause in the body will all be felt by the women. So this is a beautiful illustrative uh, cartoon where you can see how um, this woman, as she gets older and as she gets postmenopausally and much older, she's become shorter. Why should she become shorter? So one of the reasons that she could have become shorter is that she fractured her spine. And you would have not known that many old uh, women have a curvature of their spine um, you know, um, if she could have been protected from those things, the, the spine bends because um, there was probably a fracture as this arrow shows. So this is what happens to our bone as we age. The healthy, this is a microscopic image of that vertebra in the spine. And as women I mean, and men get older, but in women, the, the, it happens sooner the bone becomes thinner and it breaks easily. And this is what happens to a normal, for all of us, our bone is a very dynamic um, organ. We think it is some dead tissue sitting in the body, but it's actually alive. It's going through this process all the time. So there are cells in our body called osteoblasts that keep eating up the bone. And then there are cells called osteoblasts that will come and fill up those gaps those craters, and then it will get, you know, calcium will get put in, and then the new bone will form. So anything that goes wrong with this, too much is being eaten up, too little is being put back, or there is a calcium or deficiency, you can see how the bone can become thin or soft. And this is very, very important to keep in mind. And I just want to show you what happens to normal men and women. We reach our peak bone mass, meaning the peak strength of our bone, somewhere in our, actually, it was thought that it was only around 30, but it looks like more like late teens, early 20s is when we reach our peak bone mass. And you can see women already have a lower peak bone mass. From that, for a while, for a few years, there will be a plateau. And then there's a little bit of a loss every year. And then around menopause, which is, I told you, around 50, 
there's a dramatic fall in the bone that doesn't happen to men, which is what happens to women and puts them at a fractured threshold earlier than men. So these are all changes that happen to normal women. So just to give it in simple uh, parlance, you take a road and if the road is destroyed by rain or other wear and tear, the craters will form. If the government does not come and fix it, road and our repair pandana, we will fall, cars will break down. The same thing happens in our bone. Constantly there will be wear and tear. If that is not fixed properly, detected early, the system will crash. We ourselves will start breaking our bones. That is uh, really a simple explanation. We cannot pick up these things by simple x-rays. We need to lose nearly 30% of our bone before it shows up on an x-ray, which is why we now have modern tools called um, <clears throat> DEXA or bone densitometry. If DEXA is not available somewhere, we have come up with a, a computerized tool called FRAX. We can also put in Indian data and, and actually assess fracture risk. We can also combine this with the bone density, which is even better. So the ideal gold standard is a DEXA. If that is not available, at least this should be done. Um, so very quickly, I just want to say that simple tips for keeping this skeleton healthy and um, you know beautiful in a dancing state is no smoking, ideally no alcohol or limit alcohol um, considerably, limit caffeine excess, ask your doctor about bone density screening. All women 55 and above should get it or five years after menopause, <clears throat> whichever comes first, or earlier if you have other risk factors. Maintain a regular workout routine with weight-bearing, muscle-strengthening exercises, of, and eating a healthy diet with protein and, um, and the right amounts of um, you know, calcium is very, very important. Vegetarian diet has no vitamin D, only the sun gives us vitamin D. So if you are a vegetarian, you have to get sun exposure at least for 20 to 30 minutes between 10 a.m. And, and 4 p.m. So if we do all of these things, we can kind of um, maintain a good um, bone health throughout our life. But more than everything else, and I'm sure Dr. Aravindan and Dr. Chakalingam are going to stress on this, this is fall prevention. If we don't fall, we don't break things usually, usually. So we should not do anything that will make us fall. So always making sure we don't walk on wet surface and hold on to things and not have small drugs or play things around the house, especially when you know elder, elders are in the house. We have to be very, very careful leaving a light in the bathroom and things like that. So fall prevention is most important. And the number one area where elders fall is the bathroom. So we have to make sure it's not wet make sure it's not slippery, make sure there are handrails and make sure there are uh, non-slip mats in the bathtub. So all this has to be done. The last one minute I just want to see. Young girls, good nutrition, milk, dairy products, sun exposure, physical activity, must avoid smoking alcohol drugs, must avoid teen pregnancy, must evaluate too early, too late or abnormal menstruation and attention to eating disorders. The adult woman before menopause, healthy nutrition, weight maintenance, physical activity, vitamin D optimization, smoking, alcohol, caffeine, drugs should be avoided, adequate calcium, vitamin D during pregnancy. But these are the, the next two are the women we are most concerned today. Immediately after the menopause, adequate calcium in the diet and a daily supplement, adequate sun exposure and optimization of vitamin D, an evaluation of bone loss, as I mentioned, weight-bearing exercise, fall prevention again. And the much older women, fall prevention is number one. Good nutrition, calcium, vitamin D, screening for bone loss, and weight-bearing exercise. Thank you so much. And we will take questions in the Q&A session. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. That was so wonderful. Really enlightening. Uh, I request Dr. Chokulingam to please start his, uh, his presentation.
Good morning. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Sujata and Dr. Aravindan Kaveri Hospital Institute uh, for giving this opportunity. Uh, I'm going to uh, give a presentation on what happens when we don't look after our bones. Um, so, not moving now. Um, the World Health Organization recognized the uh, importance of the bone and joint health back uh, way back in 2000 and assigned 2000 to 2010 as a bone and joint decade, but mainly to raise public awareness, uh, the healthcare professional awareness and the government uh, organizations and NGO awareness. But they felt it is not enough and they extended the decade to another 10 years, uh, 2010 to 20, and now we are in 2021, 20 years after WHO recognized the need for this uh, uh, awareness. So what happens when the bone uh, is not uh, healthy and the osteoporosis, uh, we have already had a chat, a road traffic accident, the bones break easily, the joints deform and the bone bends and the people develop back and neck pain. Uh, and the World Health Organization recognized the, these are the four areas where the patients are really suffering, uh, our public are really suffering and uh, we need to create this awareness. I'm glad this uh, uh, webinar has been conducted. Uh, so, the outline of my talk is a bit about bones and what happens when you don't look after and how to look after Dr. Aravindan will brief uh, after, the, after my talk. A bit about bones. Now, uh, this is uh, student days, 206 bones are there, a variety of structures, variety of shapes, variety of function uh, and uh, fundamentally the bone has a structure. We all like to be uh, forever 21 or forever 16 for that matter, uh, but a bone, as Madam said, is a very dynamic structure. It is not an inert structure. Why? Because bone is uh, not a, a wood-like structure or a steel-like structure. It is a very vibrant uh, structure with uh, tissues, including cells, collagen tissue, uh, minerals, and uh, and blood vessels and nerves, the bone is sensitive. When the bone breaks, it hurts because it feels the pain. Now bone not only uh, is important for giving the shape, but it's also important for uh, attachment to the muscles with which we do variety of functions. All the muscles, uh, when they are attached to bone on either end of a joint, put the joint to do functional activities. The bone is a very important structure on that. When the bones join with each other, uh, it forms a joint. And uh, we have roughly 360 joints, a variety of joints, a hinge joint, a synovial ball and socket joint, uh, saddle joints. Uh, it has got, all of them have got different function. Bone is also important protecting our vital organs, including the heart, the brain, spinal cord, the, uh, the uh, uh, lungs and uh, most of the liver. These are all very important organs and the bones are forming a protective uh, function. The end of the bones are covered with cartilage. Cartilage is like what you see uh, a Teflon coating in the non-stick pans in a, in a kitchen uh, or like this uh, gloves which would be, it gives a, a gliding uh, smooth surface for the bones. In the joints, uh, the bones have got attachment to the ligaments just like hinges on a door to allow the movement but in a controlled manner. Now, if we compare the bone and the building, uh, the building is made of a, a steel structure uh, coupled with the bricks and uh, the mortar, which is a concrete. Now, similarly, the bone is made of a, a structure like a bamboo. Okay, it is like a bamboo uh, which has got hollow in the middle, but the structure of the bone itself is made of steel-like uh, collagen and the mortar like uh, concrete like uh, structure uh, called hydroxyapatite uh, minerals. Now, if you look at the end of the bones, uh, it looks very much like end of a pillar. It becomes broader to take on the weight. Similarly, the bones become broader at the end of the, uh, at their ends to take on the, uh, the weight of the uh, bone. That's where the osteoporosis affects mostly. That's where people break. So the bone becomes weak, as we, uh, as we talked about, it is a dive structure, uh, but as Madam mentioned, beyond the age of 20, 25, we start losing bone, whether we, uh, most of us don't know about it, but we do lose bone. So how does the bone become weak? And there's a reduction in the concrete-like structure of the bone, 
or when there is a reduction in the quality of the steel uh, of our bone. In other words, the concrete of the bone is made of the minerals, calcium phosphate and calcium carbonate and trace metals, just like what you see in the coral of a shell. The steel of the bone is the collagen. The collagen is the most abundant protein in the body and they've got abundant uh, collagen in the bone, giving this uh, structural strength. If you think about the building, concrete gives the strength to compression, whereas the steel gives the resistance to bending. Similarly, the bone is resistant to any fractures in the bending mode as well as in the compression mode when we are less than 20, 25. So what happens when you don't look after? The bone becomes weak, it becomes osteoporotic. Osteoporotic, as Madam says, we can't escape beyond an age. But what happens if the, when the bone becomes weak? The first thing uh, people complain to us, the bone hurts. They say they can't stand for long periods in the kitchen or they can't do walking as they used to do. And they show different areas of the bone, especially the foot as the area of uh, pain. The other presentations of this bone uh, being weak is they come with back pain or neck pain. Patients have general tiredness. They have difficulty in getting up from the floor. This is something I often ask my patients to sit on a mat and then ask them to get up. They find it extremely difficult. Nowadays, I find even uh, uh, patients as young as 45 to 50, they find difficulty in getting up from the floor. When the bone becomes osteoporotic, the uh, concrete-like structure is also redu reduced, the bone can actually collapse. As you can see, the CT scan shows the bone actually doesn't break into two. It can just compress uh, uh, like a sponge. Bone also bends with time. This is a lady who is in the 60s who had a early menopause, gradually noticed the deformity of her leg and the tibia becomes more and more varus and her vitamin D level was low and uh, she needed surgery. Madam already mentioned about uh, the elders in the family losing their height. And my daddy is becoming shorter than me. I mean, this is something we don't uh, think of. We finish our growth when we uh, reach our uh, 18 to 25. But why do we lose our height beyond the, the age of 50, 55? Is that the vertebrae in the, in the bone, uh, vertebrae bone in the back loses the height and gradually uh, it collapses into compression. The concrete like structure is uh, not present as it was before. So when the bone continues to weaken, it breaks. Uh, uh, hip fracture is uh, one of the commonest fractures we see uh, at Kaveri hospitals. And uh, our, our population in India is uh, moving towards an elder generation like the Western developed countries. We are seeing more and more people living longer and longer in their lifespan, reaching beyond 80, and we see more hip fractures. A common fracture due to a weak bone is just you fall and uh, try to protect yourself by putting your hand on the floor, you fracture your uh, bone radius just above the wrist. It's a very common fracture. A shoulder, as, as I've been showing all the end of the bone, this is the shoulder, uh, the end of the uh, tumor of the arm bone. We already seen the end of the wrist bone, end of the hip bone of femur. And you go back to the pillar like structure, the end of the bone, which is broader, is also softer. It is a cancellous bone. And this is an uh, eight year old man. He just tripped uh, where, in a young man uh, or a young uh, lady, you would not expect a fracture. He just tripped and fell and has a fracture of the tibia, uh, which is the proximal end of the leg bone. Now, we have gadgets, we have uh, instruments, tools to repair fractures, to get them back. These metals, implants, titanium screws, plates, replace where we can't uh, fix. We even use bone substitutes, so the calcium sulfate and calcium carbonate and calcium phosphate, uh, which is the concrete we talked about, uh, to strengthen the bone, the black uh, uh, the black spicule like areas of the calcium is used as a bone substitute. Where we can't fix the fracture, we replace. This is a hip fracture. We use uh, advanced metal uh, implants to replace, uh, to get them back on their feet because we don't want them to be in bed any more than they should be. And we get them back on their feet within a day. We see more and more rib fractures. I already mentioned the uh, protective function of the uh, bones, uh, uh, especially in the chest wall, 
it protects the heart and lungs uh, and uh, more and more people travel in the cars and uh, road traffic accidents affect young people and also the, the elder generation who accompany them and we see more severe chest injuries like multiple rib fractures we recently have uh, been uh, fixing these rib fractures as well because the lungs underneath the ribs uh, get damaged and uh, cause uh, significant uh, intrinsic cap stay we use uh, advanced metal implants which mimic the natural bone as we see the rough porous surface of this implant which mimics the structure of the bone so that the implant becomes part of the bone bone when it becomes it also does not support other structures i mentioned that it is important for the muscles and the ligaments uh, uh, for the bone to be healthy when the bones are weak the muscles ache the joints become weak they are finding it difficult even to do normal day to day activities bone is not strong enough uh, for a increased load we give uh, recently with a healthy lifestyle and we become obese are uh, some ladies uh, especially when they want to reduce the weight because they become underweight underweight is also bad for the bones because you lose protein the proteins in the bone also is lost the collagen is lost the steel structure is lost the bone breaks diabetes and hormone problems chronic diseases chronic in intake of certain medication smoking and alcohol has already been highlighted so in summary if you want to say what are the causes of the weakness of the bone for us to act on some things you can act on some things we don't have control of we need to differentiate the two things we have no control of getting older born as a female and getting menopause and losing the hormones earlier than men certain ethnic groups having family history and having certain diseases which we don't have control of then these areas we have to accept and move on so what are the things we have control of i think dr arvindan will uh, actually highlight these areas but in uh, the pictures actually uh, speak more than what i can say in words uh, like the lady you see on the picture you don't want to lose weight like her that is not also good for the bone so to summarize in a slide don't let your bone age faster than you stop osteoporosis now or stop weakness of the bone by acting now thank you for the opportunity dr kalingam that was really interesting a good lesson on how to take care of our bones i think dr arvindan is going to take it forward from here oh, thank you sujatha and uh, first of all i thank uh, uh, madam uh, dr usha shri ram and my colleague dr chokalingam uh, for coming on board uh, for this interesting session uh, because uh, on a women's day uh, why we focus on the women uh, as the who has extended the two decades of our creating bone and joint health awareness many women in our country they are not taking care of their bone health that's why it's uh, where the hindu has uh, played a significant role for choosing this very relevant topic i'll focus on uh, how do uh, i take care of as a woman uh, how can one take care of their uh, bone health so that the osteoporosis can be prevented or the bone the strength can be increased or maintained at least the uh, uh, osteoporosis is uh, there are two reasons so one is osteoporosis is a silent disease and also if uh, Uh, if the women are aware the osteoporosis can be prevented so that's why it's very important that uh, we are uh, uh, all women are aware of their bone health as the uh, madam uh, dr ravusha shriram mentioned we can divide into uh, uh, three uh, phases of a uh, woman first is you know the the bone uh, the maximum density a uh, uh, woman or man uh, both they reach before the age of uh, 30 so up to the age of 30 what is in a woman's control is to maximize their peak bone mass so we have got chance only up to the age of 30 to maximize our bone density because after 30 years with each passing year the bone density gets reduced so up to the age of 30 what a woman can do is by having a very healthy diet regular exercises which is a weight bearing exercises like a walking jogging running uh, and then the lifting of a mild to moderate weight Uh, and uh, also uh, avoiding uh, uh, or uh, 
uh, not taking uh, alcohol, avoiding uh, tobacco, and having a generally healthy lifestyle. So uh, that is largely under a, a women's control. So how do we maximize her bone mass before the age of 30? Because that is entirely within our control, unless otherwise somebody has got a specific illness. Then the next phase of women, uh, we can say that it's uh, just premenopausal adulthood uh, from the age of 30 to 45. From the age of 30 to 45, as the bone density starts getting reduced each year, many women present with uh, symptoms like the bone pain, body ache, tiredness, and all. Generally, all these symptoms and all, uh, can be managed with modification of the lifestyle by doing a regular exercises and uh, having a good dietary intake with the food which is rich in uh, uh, calcium supplements and regular exposure to sunlight. But there are certain uh, 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 women who are uh, at risk of uh, getting osteoporosis in later in their life. If there's a family history or if somebody undergoes a surgeries like uh, the removal of the uterus and the ovaries, or if there is somebody on long-term uh, oral uh, steroid intake uh, for various medical illnesses, either uh, rheumatological illness or uh, asthma and all, these people are more prone to develop osteoporosis. So we are talking about an age group where normal physiology, they should not develop osteoporosis, but because of the other reasons, they are at higher chance of developing their osteoporosis because of the family history or uh, because of the body frame, thin uh, body frame or other pre-existing uh, uh, illnesses. These women should consult a doctor and then they should have the, uh, the, the blood tests and as well as the screening. The people who are uh, susceptible to osteoporosis, which can lead to fractures later in their life. Then the next group, uh, the age group, we can say that uh, it's a perimenopausal. Perimenopausal, uh, if roughly if you translate it, uh, though it varies, between the age of 45 to 50 years. During this time, uh, a woman undergoes a significant challenges in their uh, body and the mind. Because that is the time, uh, I mean, if you want to call like midlife crisis, you call it, but I would prefer to avoid that term. Because this is uh, uh, both uh, the hormonal, physical, psychological changes, and as well as the social and family changes. Many times the children leave their home, and uh, women uh, feel that uh, they are empty nest uh, uh, syndrome. And also, uh, this is the time where the, the spouses will be at the peak of their career, so they don't spend much time with the women. And also, because of the hormonal changes, the positive effects of the estrogen on the bone is uh, reduced, and they start undergoing significant uh, uh, problems because of the uh, weakness in the bone, as well as the other uh, associated the body and uh, mind changes. This is the stage it is recommended when they have people above the age of 50 in particular to have the osteoporosis health checkup in, uh, at Kaveri. Uh, we do recommend osteoporosis a health checkup in the women presenting with the symptoms of uh, poor bone health with the calcium, vitamin D, and the bone density. If the bone density is uh, still uh, uh, not osteoporosis, we advise them on a healthy lifestyle, regular exercises. We uh, ask them to see the dietitian. If uh, there's a vegetarian, there's a significant challenge uh, because uh, the dairy source is the rich source of uh, 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 the calcium along with the leafy green uh, vegetables and as well as uh, the nuts and all. If uh, people uh, who can eat uh, fish, that's uh, again a good source. So we are, the dietitian goes through uh, the, the calcium intake, which comes to the diet. So if uh, the dietary calcium is uh, found to be inadequate, we supplement with the calcium. And the vitamin D deficiency, which has been uh, recognized as a significant cause and uh, Oh, yeah. Over the last uh, 20 years, a lot of research has gone in. And then apart from recommending the regular exposure to sunlight, uh, which may not be practical in uh, many women, particularly working women, we do start them on the vitamin D supplement as well. But nothing, uh, uh, because I'm taking a calcium and vitamin D a supplement, a women should not ignore on the regular exercises, including weight bearing exercises. That is the fundamental. And then you know, this is about the premenopausal. Postmenopausal, uh, you know, as uh, Dr. Usha Madam uh, was uh, saying, that uh, by this stage of postmenopausal, uh, we could have understood all the risk a woman may face, 
uh, if they are going to develop osteoporosis. Apart from the, all the false prevention measure, one of the important thing is the false prevention, right? Uh, because uh, the bone is already weak, as uh, the slides were shown, the spine can uh, uh, shrink uh, uh, and it, it, they can become shorter in height. They can have a muscular imbalance. They are at a very high incidence of having a, uh, fra a fracture due to a slip. That's why the non-slippery tiles at home, the safe, uh, uh, safe uh, uh, corridor from the bathroom to the, the bedroom, everything has to be, all the home modifications are to be done so that even if a woman gets up in the middle of the night, to go to the restroom, she should not have an unfortunate incidence of fall. Because, uh, you know, the, if uh, a young man or woman with a fractured hip presents to an orthopedic surgeon, management of this is uh, not that complex. Whereas in the uh, women above 65 years of age, if she comes to the orthopedic surgeon with a fractured hip, the challenges are significant. Because if you are going to fix a hip fracture or wrist fracture or spine fracture with an orthopedic implant, there is a no, uh, uh, there is not enough strength in the bone uh, to withhold these implants. So the, the significant research has gone into how do we, uh, you know, we call this a fragility fractures because the bones have become fragile because of the uh, uh, age related and hormone related changes in women. And how do we have a better implants and better uh, with the fracture fixation devices. In spite of that, we see uh, significant challenges because of the weak bone. So uh, the prevention, false prevention is the fundamental uh, uh, the objective uh, to prevent any complications because of the fall. Of course, uh, the science, the orthopedic science has significantly improved. We, any uh, elderly uh, women uh, presenting with a hip fracture, uh, we try to uh, uh, do the surgery within 20, 24 to 48 hours so that they are up and back on their feet on the second or third day. But we don't want to go to uh, that route. The whole idea of uh, practicing good medicine is the prevention of, uh, 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 prevention of all the medical issues and uh, the complications. So my suggestion for uh, uh, women on this International Women's Day is osteoporosis is a preventable disease across all age groups. It is less than 30, 30 to 45, 45 to 55, even beyond 55, by, uh, by having a good, healthy lifestyle, uh, regular exercises, adequate diet, early diagnosis of osteoporosis or the bone weakness. And if it is diagnosed early by appropriate interventions, uh, like uh, yeah, dietary uh, or uh, uh, pharmacological supplements with the calcium or vitamin D, or if necessary, uh, the further bone supplements as well. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Arvindan. We have quite a lot of questions that have come in, but uh, I was wondering if you would like to start a initiated discussion. Uh, maybe with just a few questions that have already come up. Yeah. So uh, I'll start with somebody who has asked um, how to self check the strength of bones. Is there any um, is there any way you can check it, uh, Professor Rajagopal, Ananta Subramani Rajagopal? His name is. Is there a way to check uh, your bone strength? Maybe by yourself is what I think he's asking. Oh. And uh, oh. the other thing is something. Do you want us to answer now or later, ma'am? Do you want us to answer it now? Yeah, please. Uh, there are quite a few questions like this, uh, very generic, and some are pretty specific. So I can just put the questions forward and you can start answering them, whoever wants to take it up. No, so just for this one, there is no self-check like that. There is the self-check for osteoporosis. There's a one-minute osteoporosis uh, checklist kind of thing. Do you have the Do you smoke? Are you over this age? Um, you know, are you postmenopausal? That kind of checklist, it just tells you what is your risk for osteoporosis, but not like a self check of you know doing. So. Whereas you can do muscle strength, like grip strength and things that you can do yourself, but not actually like um, know how strong your bone is. Uh, no, I don't think so. I'll leave that to Dr. Chakravinam and Dr. Arvind. Um. Uh, I can I can add on to that, madam. Uh, bone 
as such uh, is very difficult to measure uh, in an objective manner of course uh, the uh, muscles uh, which are attached to the bone when they become weak can indirectly reflect on the strength of the bone uh, but as madam said uh, let's do a self check uh, for everyone about their lifestyle that would be a, a good way to start uh, to see whether we are likely to have healthy bones as opposed to not so here is one question from one mr venkatesan uh i think he was operated for an ankle surgery uh, ankle um, fracture and pins were installed in june 2019 and he still has pain it's like on and off he has pain so what is the solution he has i'll answer that see what uh, uh, is this mentioning uh, is 41 year old uh, with an uh, ankle fracture if they have got ongoing pain that can be several reasons but we should not confuse with the osteoporosis uh, because i see in my outpatient clinic a uh, lot of people come and ask for various complaints uh, they ask uh, doctor uh, do i have an osteoporosis for example healthy young uh, girl of uh, 13 14 years of age she would have been uh, aggressive sports woman and uh, playing hockey and then got a significant fall and uh, have an uh, wrist injury and the mom will ask uh, doctor can you check her for osteoporosis uh, because uh, what should what did she have a break so it's not so uh, say ankle fracture which has been fixed in a 41 year old man or woman and if they continue to cause pain there can be other reasons whether the, the fracture has healed or not and also uh, post trauma there's another condition which can uh, happen which is uh, osteoarthritis which is uh, Uh, different from osteoporosis that's again people get confused uh, but uh, for the sake of time we don't need to dwell on uh, difference between osteoporosis and osteoarthritis osteoarthritis is one which involves the joints wear and tear of the joints whereas osteoporosis is the bone itself so i wouldn't put down to the weakness of the bone in this 41 year old uh, uh, who was operated for ankle fracture please advise for simple specific lifestyle change for an old homemaker woman to follow a bone health uh, you please yeah can i can i answer that yes sir and um, the, the short and uh, short answer is uh, start walking if you are not doing it already and if you are walking uh, increase the uh, distance of walking and increase the pace of walking i think the uh, another question in the uh, chat question answer uh, chat uh, is about uh, the weight bearing exercise what is weight bearing exercise now uh, the bone uh, even though it uh, starts losing bone as we grow older it can build up uh, more bone when we give stress to it especially compression stress so the walking when the weight goes across the bone and a compression uh, force stimulates the bone to uh, to form more bone so walking is the best exercise and of course if you are uh, have already uh, know about uh, swimming is another good exercise because you stimulate the muscles it actually brings more blood supply to the bone and uh, any uh, relaxed sporting activities uh, if they are already doing it continue doing that uh, the short answer again is walk 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 doctor uh... there's somebody here who's asking about rheumatoid arthritis can it be cured and so it says uh, it is alleged that it can be only it can only be controlled but not cured it's alleged but uh, rheumatoid arthritis uh, is inflammatory condition just like infection it causes swelling and pain and uh, warmth to that area Uh, it is entirely manageable and controllable uh, with appropriate medication at the appropriate time uh, nowadays we have rheumatologists and orthopedic surgeons very well versed about uh, the medication for rheumatoid arthritis in this day of women's day um, uh, we find uh, a lot of uh, the patients who start treatment for rheumatoid arthritis discontinue half the way they start uh, thinking native treatment and uh, discontinue then the uh, activity level of them uh, goes down they stop walking they reduce the movement the bone becomes softer so uh, rheumatoid arthritis is one of the diseases which cause osteoporosis uh, due to the disease uh, and the inactivity so rheumatoid arthritis patient they have to maintain a good level of activity they have to consult orthopedic surgeon or rheumatologist and take appropriate medication 
and continue uh, their healthy lifestyle by walking. Here is one question from one Suma Prasad. Collagen is available as a product. Is it of any use for general, uh, I think for general use, though not prescribed, but as an over-the-counter drug? I'm not a fan of any over-the-counter drug. Um, you should check with the, should, all anything we put inside our mouth. I see, I tell people you want to apply some, um, you know, some Bengay or Olimi gel or Iodex, anything, you know, uh, please do that. But if you want to put anything into your mouth, um, you should really do under supervision of the doctor. So, um, see, people use a lot of this college, you know, uh, chondroitin sulfate and glucosamine and things like that for um, degenerative joint disease like osteoarthritis, which uh, uh, Dr. Arvindan mentioned, but uh, not for osteoporosis or osteomalacia, which is soft bone due to vitamin D deficiency. And uh, just to add to what Dr. Chokhilnyam said, I mean, really walking is a, is a wonderful exercise. Uh, so is yoga and Tai Chi. Um, if people want, that's also very telling. So we can also include that in the regimen, do a little bit of this and then a little bit of that. But uh, walking is the best. Uh, swimming is great exercise. It must be differentiated from weightlifting. Everything you asked here. Is different from weightlifting. In fact, weight lift pani kala So and break something. So best is not to go there. So somebody here has asked, what do you mean by weight bearing exercises? I do weight training in the gym. Is that the same? No, not the same. The training in the gym under supervision with a trainer uh, is, is, is fine. But I'm just saying that people shouldn't confuse weight bearing with weight lifting. So uh, I am 42 years old. Do I need calcium supplements? If yes, how much? This is from a lady, Savita Lakshmi. Uh, if she's before the menopause, no. And if she's make, you know taking enough uh, calcium containing foods in the diet, dairy, greens, dals, that kind of food, um, then she doesn't. But a lot of Indian women um, do not get the adequate amount of calcium they need. So they'll have to really look at, uh, are they getting, the, you know, taking an intake of all of this, like vegans, or, or somebody would have heard something that milk is not good for you, they stop taking all that. So such people, or lactose intolerant people, they may have to take calcium supplements. Otherwise, after menopause, um, we give them about 500 milligrams of um, calcium daily. Dr. Usha, here is a specific question for you from Dr. Ranga K. Ranga Krishna Swami. Uh, uh, so she says, I am Dr. Ranga. What is your opinion on the usage of sunscreen lotions prescribed by dermatologists? <clears throat> so if dermatologists are prescribing it because of photosensitivity and for a particular medical reason, I guess it's okay. But as a fairness cream and all that other nonsense that goes on, uh, it should totally be banned. Thank you, doctor. So here is one person. Which I'm sorry, I'm being very um, dogmatic about this only because I think young women are spoiling their health. Um, it's causing, you know, the, we, we are perpetuating the, uh, the, the social, um, you know, norms that have been established in our country about color. So. Uh, people are using sunscreen as a fairness cream and not really as a, like you said, if a dermatologist is prescribing because of sun sensitivity or issues like that, then it's a treatment. Then it's okay. But if you use sunscreen, 90 to 95% of the vitamin D will not get absorbed. Here is somebody who has said, is C-section, cesarean, uh, one of the main reasons for back bone pain for women. Any home remedies suggested? I think uh, there was also this low back pain that was coming up and uh, one of the most women complain about low back pain as they grow older. So I think here is a discussion that we can have on that. Dr. Chucklingham, please. Back, back pain uh, is a, 
separate topic by itself. Uh, the back is a complex uh, area uh, of uh, bones, discs, and the synovial joints in the back. And the back supports the uh, body in erect posture uh, while standing, walking, and sitting. So the muscles have to be in good control, um, and the ligaments have to be in good shape. So the causes of back pain are not necessarily uh, only are uh, not only due to the weakness of the bone. A variety of joint problems, disc problems, alignment problems, muscle weakness problems. So when it comes to uh, the uh, specific question, uh, cesarean section and back pain, uh, often people, uh, often ladies who have uh, deliveries uh, after the delivery, they stop uh, doing exercises because they are worried about the healing of the wound, uh, and they put on weight uh, more at the front on the belly. Uh, so the posture of the back becomes bad. So they go into excessive uh, curvature of the spine, putting more stress on the joints in the back. So simple exercises uh, under the uh, advice of the uh, orthopedic surgeon and the supervision of physiotherapy can make uh, can do wonders for the back pain in women. I think uh, specific exercises of the back should be followed, whether you had cesarean section or normal delivery. And you should not blame uh, the uh, injection given during the uh, delivery, like uh, epidural or spinal, uh, as a cause of back pain. They don't cause back pain. Thank you, doctor. So uh, I am a 40-year-old woman and extremely obese. I like to do slow jogging. Am I hurting my knees in the long run? This is from an anonymous attendee. So what's the age of the patient? Uh, 40, and she's extremely obese. Uh -huh. uh, and the, um, uh, I, I've illustrated in one of my slides the effect of the uh, obesity and putting extra stress on the bones uh, and uh, causing, uh, uh, causing uh, uh, bone pain. It puts more stress on the joints. Uh, yes, the knee joint is often uh, the uh, cause of the pain and the presentation to orthopedic surgeon when you are uh, obese. She mentioned extremely obese. The obesity is uh, now considered as a disease beyond the body weight and the bone mo body mass index. And we should get professional help for extreme obesity. They are, they are a group of people called, uh, they are a group that's uh, morbid obesity. Uh, you can't simply reduce weight by uh, just running and, uh, and fasting. You have to get the help of a professional who will uh, work through endocrine causes for the uh, obesity. Uh, and dietary causes for the obesity and lack of physical activities for the obesity. And there are professional help to reduce morbid obesity by even surgery uh, to get them back uh, to good shape. So uh, in short, professional advice for uh, morbid obese uh, and obese uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, to put less stress on the knees. Um, here is one from Subhashree. I uh, she's, fractured, she's had a fracture twice due to fall. One's at risk and the other recently on knee. I think she meant wrist, wrist I think. Last yeah. November, I started walking after two months, but developed back muscle stiffness and pain. Can, it con can I continue walking? She's asked. Can I answer? Yeah. See, uh, the, uh, uh, the lady has uh, two fractures and now she has got a back pain. So uh, we need to understand these fractures, is it due to a minor injury or is it a major significant injury? If it is due to a minor injury, and uh, I don't know about her age, but uh, they, uh, it, it, it can be a fragility fractures, which is, can be due to the bone weakness. And also with the backache, uh, you know, we need to assess the strength of her bone. So we want to, we would like to rule out osteoporosis or bone weakness as one of the causes for her frequent fractures and the backache. So it's better that she consults. Yes, uh, the walking, as uh, Dr. Choklingham told, anybody, you know, even with the people with the severe osteoarthritis or uh, people that uh, have got osteoporosis, as much as walk, as the pain allows, is essential to maintain the bone joint and the muscle health. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, one Navalan Veerapandian, he's asked, what are the alternatives of calcium intake apart from milk and milk products for vegetarians? Uh, dals, beans, uh, ragi, some of the millets, um, and uh, so those are. See the the thing about dairy is for a small cup, like a glass of milk, you can get about three hundred milligrams of calcium, and to get that amount of calcium, you'll have to eat 
a lot of beer, you know, several cups of it, and then you know, and also dals uh, or um, you know, millets and all that. So, uh, which is why we tell people to balance everything. If they do, if do not eat, um, uh, you know, drink dairy products, um, then um, because of uh, their vegan or something like that, um, then you'll have to make sure that you get these other things. But if it is because of some um, lactose intolerance, they can also try other milk, soy milk, almond milk, uh, lactose free milk. Uh, those contain um, calcium also. Thank you, ma'am. Vimala Krishna Vallam Kunda, she's asked, she says she's having back pain and when tested, BMD resulted in RED and even having pains at side of hips. My age is 56. Please help. Is there any precaution or things to be done to get relief from pain? So one very important piece of information, osteoporosis does not cause pain. It's a painless condition. It can cause pain if you fracture something, even micro fractures. But whenever people have pain, it means there's either osteomalacia, which is soft bone from vitamin D deficiency, or it may be, um, you know, fibromyalgia. Uh, it's more, uh, you know, it's in that region, but it may be more from, you know, muscle and achy things there, uh, or it may be an arthritis. So they need a, a, a formal. As Dr. Arvindan said, um, we should have a formal assessment. Thank you, ma'am. Here's something, I think one more for you. Please tell us how to get rid of back pain, which occurs on the first and second day of periods. Well, that's the easy answer. Um, the easy answer is we used to suffer with all that long time ago, but now we have absolutely fantastic, non-hormonal, simple medicines that we can take for two, three days in the menstrual cycle and all the pain goes away, traffic, MF, maftal spas. These are all tablets that we use and they are, they are non-hormonal and can be safely taken. So one question here. Some people say if calcium is taken beyond a certain age, it will be deposited on the bones, which is not good. Could you please clarify regarding taking calcium in the form of medicine or food? Can I answer that? Yes, sir. Um, there, there is uh, a misconception about, uh, about calcium uh, public, uh, public product. The calcium is available uh, in a natural uh, food uh, sufficiently for us. Uh, around one gram is all we need for most of us, and 1.2 gram when you're postmenopausal. And all of us can get the calcium from the dietary source. The problem is the vitamin D helps in the absorption of the calcium into the into our system that's where the lack of sunlight lack of exposure to uh, the natural sunlight and uh, having uh, dietary resources uh, in a vegetarian uh, food uh, is not sufficient for the vitamin D. so the lifestyle is where we talk about walking not only improves the density of the bone by uh, weight bearing exercise but also walking in the outdoor uh, in the sunlight uh, increases the uh, vitamin D synthesis that helps in the absorption of the calcium from the food. So if you take uh, one tumbler of milk, which is around 300 ml of milk, we can, uh, sorry, 250 ml of milk, you can get as much as 300 milligram of calcium. That means one fourth of uh, our calcium requirement comes with just one tumbler of milk. And uh, I think one of the questions being asked in the question and session is about uh, uh, the pure vegans who, uh, who avoid even the milk and milk products, uh, they are uh, at a huge risk of uh, the calcium deficiency. So taking calcium, if you take too much, let's say I take five gram of calcium, uh, if the vitamin D is not enough, uh, then uh, we just lose that in the stool. It doesn't get absorbed. Now, uh, calcium does not get deposited in the bone too much. That's a question from the, uh, from the, from the chat box. Is, uh, Will I take, uh, will the calcium get deposited in the bone and harm the bone? The answer is doesn't do that. The body absorbs whatever calcium we need, uh, around 1.2 and more, not more than that. Because calcium is controlled extremely with the hormones, not by just taking too much calcium. Thank you, doctor. Here is a question for Dr. Aravindan. 
he Dr. Aravindan, you indicated that the removal of ovaries leads to loss of bone density. What, what is the side effect uh, more commonly known? Why is the side effect more commonly known? I think that's the question. Yeah, see, it's, uh, I mean, if you have uh, the whole uh, topic of the discussion for today is uh, women and osteoporosis because the hormones, men also lose the bone after the age of 30 years, but around the menopause, the estrogen, the positive effect of the estrogen, the hormone on the bone gets significantly reduced. So the women who undergo the surgery to remove all the ovaries, they can have an early menopause. And the positive effect of the, uh, the hormone on the bone health is not there. That's why uh, we assess them. So one of the risk factors, as I said, even in the premenopausal stage, uh, where the women uh, who can develop, stand the risk of osteoporosis is who undergo the, the, the surgical removal of the ovary Thank you, doctor. Um, can, you shed, can you shed some light on bone loss in the jaw affecting teeth and suggest remedies? I don't get that question, please. What is it? Uh, so the, this person wants to know if there is, if you can explain the bone loss in the jaw of, and does it affect teeth? Can you suggest remedies? Uh, I'm not sure whether Dr. Shuklingam can uh, have. Yeah. Now, I think the, uh, the general uh, principle applies to the jaw as well. Uh, weight bearing exercise for the jaw is uh, chewing. Uh, we have stopped chewing the food. We start uh, uh, more ready-made foods and uh, we swallow a lot. So um, uh, first uh, solution is if you have normal healthy uh, teeth, uh, use them well and uh, use to uh, mat uh, chew your food well. That actually improves the bone density, maintains the bone density. If we have teeth problems and you are not able to chew properly, uh, properly due to pain, get them sorted out because uh, if you don't chew in that area, the bone uh, is lost. And often uh, people uh, prolong or postpone uh, denture fitting, saying that they don't want artificial teeth. I think beyond the uh, beyond the age of seventy, when we have bad teeth, it is important for the uh, for the dentist to uh, have an examination and to have a denture fitted and to get all the parts of the jaw to be used. When the bone is used, it will maintain its bone density. That applies to jaw as much as to all the bones in our body. Thank you, Doctor. Doctor, one more thing. Yes. As a rule, number one, we have poor dental hygiene. And gingivitis, gum disease, is the number one cause of, of teeth loss. And as a diabetes specialist, I want to tell you, that's also a very big risk for uh, gingivitis and, and, and bone loss. So regular, uh, you know, having, uh, cleaning the teeth and brushing the teeth and keeping the gums and other not poking the gums you know using sharp instruments and uh, you know picking on the gums those are all things um, we, we shouldn't do and of course um, chewing pan and, uh, and and tobacco and zarda all that is also major causes of uh, bone loss thank you ma'am here's a question for you this is from aparna varma from bangalore I experience pain under the feet and legs by noon after all the basic household work. Please suggest. I think she needs a remedy for that. So women, we um, uh, have this problem a lot, largely from bad footwear. Um, we wear high heels, you know, uh, those kind of, you know, stilettos and all those things. So bad footwear is the number one reason. The other reasons may be flat feet. Um, it may be varicose veins. People who have varicose veins, by the as the day goes by, their their legs start paining, their feet start paining. So um, I would start like backwards, get a um, foot exam done to make sure the arch is okay. And if there are corns, if there are calluses, um, if the footwear is okay, then looking for varicosities, and and only then think of some other rarer things. So it's probably a, a simpler thing. Uh, Dr. Aravindan, yeah. Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, the one, one more thing we can add. Usually, the, the calcaneal spur also can be one of the reasons. Yeah, uh, but that uh, pain is not mostly in the morning, the first step they take out of the bed. But that can affect, uh, that can come at during any point of the day. Uh, this, uh, so, 
many times you no know, if the paint doesn't settle down with uh, the footwear modifications or uh, the hot water fermentation and the massage and the anti inflammatories we do suggest a local uh, injection as well to reduce the uh, inflammatory cause of the pain they the heel pain or the plantar fasciitis as we call thank you sir here is one person she had steroids for treatment for blood disorder 3 years ago now she is 48 years old and suffers from osteoarthritis and abn early stage at night hip joint uh, at right hip joint sir will it be is it curable and if so for how long will it take what will whether will it affect other bones also dr chaklingam you want to yeah um the point number 1 uh, the person had steroids for the treatment of blood disorder Uh, steroids uh, themselves can cause uh, weakness of the bone, uh, osteoporosis, uh, and uh, she mentioned that she's been taking. Uh, she had steroids three years back, probably for a short period. Then that would not be a big problem. Number two, uh, I suffer from osteoarthritis and the AVN early stage of right hip joint, meaning that the blood supply to the bone in the uh, upper part of the thigh bone has been affected. The question is, will it be curable? The answer is yes. There are uh, methods uh, to. a uh, treat avascular necrosis as uh, what is the avn uh, stands for uh, with the uh, stem cell therapy in a early stage uh, surgical procedures uh, medical management to improve the density of the bone uh, and also in a later stage with the surgical procedures such as hip replacement so it depends on the stage of the avn uh, she has mentioned the avn is in the early stage then she should consult an orthopedic surgeon who may uh, find out whether the patient is suitable for uh, stem cell therapy and bone density supplement thank you doctor there are just about two questions we can take because there are i, I understand there are more than 100 questions here and i think they'll be sent to you privately so there are two questions one is uh, a person rukmini gopal she wants to know elderly women would you suggest that they use a stick i think they mean walking stick and uh, the other thing is one person uma shrinivasan who says she is a breast cancer survivor who underwent chemotherapy 11 years ago does that have any effect on her bone health the, the first question i'll take probably the second question i'll request dr rusha madam to answer the, the stick the uh, the false prevention as we uh, uh, dr rusha madam was uh, uh, mentioning uh, or highlighted that's uh, one of the important thing where people the elderly women uh, because they will have a uh, uh, lot of issues on the balance when they suddenly get up from the bed uh, because of maybe they may be on various medications uh, and uh, the muscular and neurological uh, imbalance may uh, be one of the reasons why they may fall so and uh, the using of the stick or walker sometimes it this definitely will help to balance and also uh, many times uh, the the people with the arthritis Uh, about this wear and tear of the joint we will uh, prescribe them to have the walking stick to reduce the load going through the joint to reduce the pain so it's not a walking stick is not a routine uh, suggestion or prescription uh, for elderly people but people who have got balance issues to prevent any fall so the uh, uh, stick or walker can be used or if patients who have got severe arthritis to reduce the load going through the joint to reduce the pain Uh, we do suggest uh, to uh, use the stick thank you the second question is about breast cancer and yes. uh, dr usha please so uh, when women have breast cancer um so many times they are also asked to undergo um you know hysterectomy and oophorectomy remove the effect of the estrogen on the breast cancer so that puts them you know immediately into a menopausal state and there's a difference between surgical menopause and um, natural menopause in surgical menopause you know in one surgical strike we remove the ovaries and um, they become menopausal right away so it's like a rapid fall in their um, you know bone also that's one part the second part cancer itself the cancer itself the metastasis if there are any to other bones all of that has an impact on bone and bone loss happens and the third is to use certain medications and and uh, sometimes in chemotherapy regimens steroids are used so that also causes bone loss but for breast cancer 
we used to use a drug called tamoxifen. We still use it for a, for a few years, five years after surgery, and that actually has a positive effect on bone. Um, some people don't use tamoxifen; they use um, an estrozole, and you know, that has a negative effect on the bone. So it all depends on if they had removal of the ovaries, if they're postmenopausal, um, you know, and if they uh, if the bone if the cancer is contained with the breast. And if they are on um, chemotherapy that includes steroids, so yes, the short answer is uh, yes, it can seriously affect um, bone, and so um, and so we have to pay attention to their bone health as well. Thank you, ma'am. This has been a very wonderful session, and it was extremely informative and uh, actually a learning experience for everyone who was participating in this. Thank you, Dr. Aravindan. Thank you, Dr. Kukalingam. It's been a wonderful session. Thank, thank you, Dr. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sujata. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I'll also sign up. Thank you, Dr.